What's up, guys? Coach Matt here. Just wanted to drop in and say thank you so much for listening to our podcast every week. This week, we have Savvy Simo jumping on. Just an absolute incredible human being. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that's that's got to be the highest stuff that you've had thus far. It was, yeah, this year's been so good. And I, um, like, in terms of volleyball, in terms of my relationship and everything like that. But then everything in Chicago, I don't know if you guys are all, like, up to date. Obviously, Maureen kind of knows what went on. Like, that was super tough. Um, and... I've still been like struggling with that whole situation and like trying to um, come out of that because I was expecting to be playing this whole fall and like playing the league and stuff. And so to all of a sudden not be playing is like really tough. So I've been kind of in a weird transition phase. My anxiety has been really bad. Um, So yeah, just trying to navigate that, trying to continue to like train and stuff for the fall challengers. But it's like weird because this year was like my best year that I've had. It just yeah. has been kind of clouded by that whole situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, and I know I said that jokingly about me being your coach. No, but, like, I take that seriously. <laughs> you were amazing. <laughs> you really have had an incredible season. Oh, uh, league or not, congratulations. Um, just for the people that are tuning in, give a little rundown of – who you are and just your backstory of getting into volleyball and whatnot. Uh, just a little biography, just throw all your accolades out there besides the ones from this past season. Um, so, yeah, so leading up to this past love season. it. I'm Savvy Simo. I'm from San Diego. I grew up in San Diego and then I went to UCLA and played both beach and indoor volleyball there. And then I, um, I was maybe going to play indoor overseas after my fourth season of indoor, but then COVID happening during my fourth season of beach. So I went back for a fifth year, um, did that, and then went straight into uh, the AVP in 2021. Um, I won two national championships at UCLA, which was awesome on the beach team. I, I just loved playing beach there. And then um, came out and just had a kind of interesting transition, like, you know, qualified for my first event and didn't qualify for the next couple. And then 2022, I kind of count as like my first real season on tour because I started qualifying and playing more consistently. And um, yeah, 2023, now 2024 this is my best season so far, winning Denver, winning um, Virginia Beach, like you said, getting engaged and stuff was really cool. Um, so it's been cool to kind of progress. I feel like I'm at the best um, volleyball level I've ever been at, which is awesome. Just continuing to progress and find new ways to get better and um yeah I'm loving I'm taking a little break I just had my first practice back in like three weeks so took a little mental and physical break which was nice but yeah trying to get back in the swing of things so that I can be prepared for those um FIVB challengers in the fall but yeah it's kind of my rundown I just want to add something just want to add something because she's being way too nice (laughs) um Savvy was number one seed a number one team at UCLA and she was an all-american indoor and beach and she not only for the AVP won a couple events she also beat some Olympians this year so I think she's being a little too soft on herself <laughs> she told it back. She, she told yes, it back. And I appreciate it was, that Thank of you. course yeah I needed to share it so yeah. she's been yeah. rocking it this 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 summer for sure oh thank you love so awesome. sweet so savvy yeah, yeah. If, yeah, just like Maureen said, Savvy has done some very incredible things. And so I'm stoked to have her in here uh, so that we can all just learn about just her as a human being and also as a player and what's gotten her to this point. Uh, so Savvy, thinking about um, what do you think was the hardest transition from just playing in college to now it's all on you? and. Yeah. You're like chasing after professional beach volleyball. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest part has been the shift from being on a team to being, it's not individual. I have my partner, but it's like, it's totally different when you're like competing with a team, you're working out as a team and your goals as a team, even though it's like you and your partner, you still are like, you know, there's five pairs in college or indoor was my whole team. And so coming to the professional side has definitely been an adjustment. I feel like I've finally settled into that, but like, you know, you're kind of in it for yourself and you don't have control over what your partner does. Like we're all adults. Like you have to kind of figure it out. No one's telling you what to do. You have to kind of decide for yourself, which events you want to go to, how hard you want to train at certain times of the year and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's definitely the biggest adjustment feeling kind of like 
I don't know, it's weird. You, you practice against all these people um, and then you have to compete against all of them. And then like you go out with them after. And it's, it's like such a weird community as you guys know. And um, it's really special as well. But that was a shift for me is like, you know, everyone's kind of in it for themselves. And like, you know, you're trying to make a living, trying to make money versus like competing towards a, a goal. And I feel like I am so friendly and I love making like these connections and that's tough because like at practice I'm like so friendly and then I go to games and I'm like friendly before the match and people are like very focused very serious and I'm like I feel like I can still play well being like my friendly self and some people have to like really lock in and so that was that's always been kind of weird for me I'm like wait you know what's going on and, and stuff like that so um that's definitely been the toughest adjustment um and the biggest the biggest difference uh between and then just seasons much longer like I've been competing since March and could go into the end of November versus um, college beach is what Marine, like March to May, like mid March to beginning of May. It's like a pretty short season. Um, granted I was in I played indoor in the fall. So that was like, I kind of was in season a lot, but this professional is also just like kind of almost year round. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of volleyball. Yeah, um, a lot. And a lot of travel, you know, you're not just yeah. like flying here or there in the States. A lot of times it seems like you're going a lot of different places overseas as well. Um, so I can't imagine how taxing that can be for you guys. Uh, yeah, it I is. hope to it's experience it at some point, yeah. but I, I can't imagine it right now. No, and for me, and it affects everyone differently. Like for Evan, it affects him. Evan's my fiance. He, it affects him physically. Like he gets super, um, his, he has like knee and shoulder stuff. So when he's traveling up, mine affects me mentally. Like I get super mm. tired and then that triggers panic attacks and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and everyone has a different way of like resetting, uh, processing all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's, you kind of have to figure that out like on your own. It's, it's yeah. scary. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and Sammy, that's, I admire you a lot for your, uh, your vulnerability with all of that. Uh, because I think that's something that a lot of athletes and just human beings struggle with in general. And so um, kind of piggybacking off of that vulnerability, like what's, what's a way that you have found works best for you to be able to um, fight back against those panic attacks in the times where uh, you feel like everything's caving in and yeah. um, you might want to crawl up in a corner and just knock it out, but you find a way to just keep battling and keep going. Um, so what's a way that you, you help yourself out in that way? Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. It goes through phases where like, sometimes I like right now in these last couple of weeks have been really tough for me. And, um, I feel like I'm pretty out of control over the panic attacks. And I think some of it's a little bit of depression too, just from like the total shift in like my idea of what my season was going to be. And so that's been kind of a weird thing, but, um, I love being outside. That's kind of a big thing for me. And so like when I'm anxious, like just stepping outside and you know, it's really the weather here is really gloomy and cloudy, which I don't like, but like getting in the sun is good for me. Exercising is usually really good for me. Um, and for me, the reason I'm so vulnerable is because usually when I voice what's going on, it helps me move past it. And like when I, when I hold stuff in, I don't do as well. I've never been that type of person where I'm like pretty um, introverted and I don't really communicate what's going on. And so um, when I can express to someone, Hey, I'm having a panic attack or, Hey, I don't feel right. Or this is going through my head or whatever. It, it helps me kind of move through it a little bit faster versus just letting it kind of like spin and spin and spin in my head. Um, cause I don't, I don't know if any of you guys experience panic attacks or anxiety, but you, you feel like you're crazy. Like you're like going, you have all these crazy thoughts and, and symptoms and feelings. And you're like, what is wrong with me? Am I dying? And you know, 30 minutes later, when you've kind of come out of that cycle, you're like, Whoa, I'm fine like you know you're just tired after but in the moment you feel like you're gonna die and so it's like you know it's 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 interesting and I'm still again trying to find ways to like navigate because I just had a panic attack in a in her, the Hermosa Open I had a panic attack so bad I had to forfeit a match which I've never had to do and I think you know I've learned what my triggers are and a lot of it's like extreme fatigue extreme stress like and I, I do think that situation in Chicago where we got bummed from the league was kind of a traumatic emotional experience that we hadn't really recovered from um so I played the whole weekend exhausted. I was anxious the whole weekend, not necessarily even about volleyball, but just like, I just felt terrible. Um, and then during my match in the semifinal, I had to forfeit. Cause I just like felt like my body couldn't go anymore. I felt like I was in blackout. Like it was a really scary experience. And so I'm still kind of recovering from that because that put a weird spin on like, usually volleyball is my escape and it wasn't. And I felt so trapped. And like when you're on a court playing a game and there's people watching, you don't really feel like you can't really get out of it when your heart's already racing 
you're shaking, you're sweating, like all the symptoms of a panic attack you're already having when you're playing a match. And so it's hard to like, you know, calm yourself down from that. So I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm having lots of meetings with different sports psychs, with a psychiatrist, because I've never been on medication either. And it might be time to get on a super low dose of something just to like stabilize myself. Um, but yeah, it's been cool. I've had a lot of conversations with people lately and uh, reminded myself I'm not alone. So many people experience this to different, you know, different extents and everyone has different traumas and different triggers and stuff. Um, so reminding myself that everyone, you know, everyone goes through something, whether it's anxiety or, or something else. Um, and that there are a ton of people who experience this. And sadly, that makes me feel better. I don't want anyone to experience this, but knowing that I'm not alone is, is nice. And, um, and yeah, just knowing that the cycle or the episode is going to pass. It's really hard in the moment to recognize that, but that's like anything in life, any, any tough time. Um, sorry, I don't mean to get all philosophical, but it's all, it always passes with time. Um, just about being patient and, and trusting. And that's, that's hard to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, man. For the people listening. Sorry. I just want to mention. Um, so because a lot of people are not aware of what yeah. happened in yeah. Chicago. Um, so what happened to Savi is that she got tied for the eighth team for the league. Um, so basically at the end of the tournament in Chicago, when both of the team, um, got eliminated, the AVP told them last second that they needed to play a game to 15. I mean, a game like the league. Um, so they had to play. Yeah, two games to 15, and whoever team was winning that game was getting into the league. Um, so, unfortunately, Savi didn't make it, even though that was her best season so far. And I'm so sorry, Savi, <laughs> <laughs> because I felt like it was such a powerful MLU, and Adi just had such an amazing season, and you were such on a high. And it's sad that you almost feel like, like you're sad about it you know it's sad that you're yeah. in that period because it's like it's such a high it's so amazing and I mean the league is cool but it doesn't define you and there's yeah. going to be a lot more well, for thank sure. you dude and I, I appreciate you explaining it and it's such a weird situation because like the day before Abby and I lost to Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss 1917 in the third set and yeah. it was like one of the best matches we ever played we came back we were down 14 11 and came back and almost beat them we actually had match point and like we left that day feeling so confident, although we lost. We were like, this is awesome. We're playing so good. We're going to have a good tournament. Yeah. We lose the next game the next morning. I, I, the other team just came out really fresh. And then we thought we were done with the tournament. And to have to, like, turn around and play another match after that is, like, <laughs> I was, like, heading to the freaking bar. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, like, I was, like, ready to go have a drink. And, like, Haley and Kylie, uh, Harvard DeBerg that we had to play against, they were, like, looking at flights to go home. And so it's just, like, yeah. as athletes and as people, like, you know, we prepare for certain things. And so they never communicated. Like if, if they had communicated that there was going to be a playoff, then like, fair enough. Like then we're ready to go, but it just wasn't communicated. I, I can't argue that they wanted to use the wild card on April and Alex. They're a great team. They're super marketable. They should be in the league, all these things. It's just, uh, you know, yeah. So like Marine said, like it's kind of something sprung on you and you're something that feels so big, which in the grand scheme of things probably isn't that big a deal, but the league at this time, like it's a lot of money for players. Um, and it could have been really great for me and Evan as a couple, it would have been great for me and Abby to keep going, keep playing, keep building on what we had. And so it just to have that, like come down to one game in a format we've never played before, um, was really tough. And we went and battled, we gave it our all. We lost 15, 12, I think in the third set. Um, and the first person to pick me up after I, collapsed and started crying after was Ky Kylie DeBerg who I just played against yeah. like it was just a situation that none of us were expecting and prepared for and um so yeah like it, it was just a weird situation I wish them nothing but the best it was nothing to do with them and I really I really like I'm fine with the AVP now it took me some time to like process and because I, I really do want the AVP to be successful and stuff um it just like let, put us in such a weird headspace that we're still kind of like I've had anxiety my whole life but I think that episode was the catalyst to like um you know, just this little cycle that I'm in. I'm so tired anyways, um, just from the timing of season and stuff. So it's just like, you know, I, I'm going to be fine. I've been through a cycle like this before. It just takes time to get my footing again. It's weird. Like I've had panic attacks my whole life. And every time I get one, it's like the first time it's ever happened. It's such a weird, uh, such a weird thing. Um, but yeah, thanks for explaining that Marina. It's, uh, for the people that don't, don't know. Um, social media was blowing up. I had to get off social media. Everyone was very supportive of us, but it was just like a lot to get like, uh, wrapped up in. So I've, I've taken some time to like 
I haven't posted like anything. I haven't written anything about it. I haven't, I've tried not to talk to people about it. Um, just so I can process. I went, I've been trying to like, go out of town and like take time off and stuff. Um, and so that's been, that's been really good. Yeah. And yeah, I, I can't imagine what that would feel like. Um, and, and I appreciate I, again, just the vulnerability, everybody can relate to pain yeah. in some way. And so often people are, and, and nobody can relate to the pain that you're feeling right now specifically, but like, in some way, shape, or form is relatable to someone else. And so I appreciate you so much for oh, being willing to, to share about all that. Um, and, and kind of to shift uh, shift to the other end of things of how amazing of a season <laughs> it was for you. Um, what was a moment where you felt just an absolute breakthrough? Because mm-hmm. obviously this was your first was this your first season where you won an AVP event? Um, yeah. 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 And I remember you made the final of, what was that, Hermosa last year? I made the final of Hermosa last year, and I made the final of Denver uh, of Denver as well last year. Okay. Those two places have been pretty good to me. I, I like playing in, in Hermosa and Denver. <laughs> I've, I've done well there in the past. Man, a beach and a mountains, girl. There it yeah. is. And I yeah. get both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so with – with those events, thinking back to 2023 when um, you would make it to the final and then just couldn't, for some reason, just couldn't get the win, mm. shifting to this season, what what was something that changed? Was it more consistency in skills? Was it a mindset shift? What was that for you that allowed you to get those wins this season? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, a big part of it is a consistent partner. Like I've been playing with Abby Van Winkle this whole season and she's been awesome. Last year I played with Tony some, I played with Megan Rice and Hermosa because Tony was injured. Um, So that was like a totally new thing. But I think the biggest change from last year to this year is last year when I would make it to a final, I'd be, because I made it to the final of a challenger as well. And that was probably my biggest accomplishment because the competition was so high. And I think my thoughts when I won the semifinal, I was like, we have a medal we made it to the finals. Like I was almost just stoked to be in that position versus this year. It was like, I want to win. And of course I wanted to win last year too. But, um, I think like this year, like I showed up to the finals and was like, I'm not losing. Like I'm going to win versus like last year. I was just like, I was having these great accomplishments as well and making finals, but I was just like, so stoked to be there and to have a medal and for the opportunity and all these things that like, I wonder if that kind of like, you know, shifted my mindset and maybe I I didn't play as as strong as I normally would. Um, So I think that's been the biggest shift, obviously the consistent partner who I'm loving playing with. And also, yeah, just the shift of like, I'm not losing. Like I came to win. Like obviously when we went to Virginia beach, that was like a bid for Chicago that we weren't sure if we were in or not. And so like, once you get to the semis, it's like you're in to Chicago, which is what you should go there to do. Um, And that happened to me two years ago in 2022 when the qualifiers were like this, where you have to travel. And once you make the semis you're in. And I remember getting to the semis and being like, yes, like we won the quarters. We're into this event. And then you shit the bed in the semis. Cause you're just, <laughs> like, you're just happy to like make the main draw of the bigger AVP. Um, and so like, that's been a, a trend of mine and I'm so sick of taking second. I've done it enough. I'm like, and second's awesome. But it's like, I, this year it was like, I'm not losing like, um, and, and we played to win, you know, and that, that's a huge difference. And, uh, something I'm really proud of, of me and Abby, because she's never even been in this position before. And she's come out and had a killer season. I'm biased because she's my partner, but I would, I would vote her, you know, rookie of the year or, or breakthrough play of the year, most improved, whatever the award is. I think she's done a great job at holding her own. And, and, and cause she, she played last year, but wasn't like consistently main draw, wasn't consistently finishing high. And so she's come a long way as well. And that's a huge part of why I've been successful is because of, mm. you know, the work she's put in and like the progress she's made. And, how much she's been able to do with not a ton of experience. It's really cool. Man. Well, obviously she can't do that on her own. And (laughs) and so with that being said, how do you feel like you as a partner has um, attributed to her growth in that way? Um, Yeah, I've been in an interesting role this year. Like for the first time, I feel like I'm the veteran in the partnership, which is weird. Like I just turned 26. I've only been playing a couple seasons on tour. So it's weird to kind of have that role, but I've done enough. Uh, you know, AVPs and international travel in comparison to her to feel like I could take on that role. And like, it's been really fun 
you know, and sometimes like hard, like showing her like the ropes in, in terms of like, hey, you shouldn't be flying spirit when we're going to a tournament <laughs> because the flights get canceled, they get delayed and it's unpredictable. It's so, like stuff like that that you don't really think about. <laughs> yeah, just going for, like, you know, she's going for the cheapest, the cheapest option as, as we all want to do. But like, I've stuck with United for a long time. I've built status and like, it's worth the extra hundred bucks to fly United than it is to fly spirit and have it be so unpredictable. Um, and so stuff like that, it's been like a challenge, like getting her to understand, like, Hey, like try and pick one airline to build points and build status. And so you can get the lounge access. You need to get a credit card. You're 20. Oh my God, <laughs> it's like- time to get a credit card. Like um, all of us were so sheltered because of COVID, like sure. when we were in college. And so it kind of like, <laughs> in a way, put us back. Um, Evan's been a huge help for me financially to like get me started on some stuff because COVID was weird. Like Abby did, I think Abby only did five years in college, but there's girls doing six, seven years in college. And so you're like, you, once you, when you're in college, you're not really, I don't think you're really a full adult until you leave and you're, you're post-college and stuff. And you have to kind of figure it out on your own. Um, and so it's been cool to show her that because she's also one of my great friends too. So it never felt like I was like, talking down to her or like bossing her around and I would be like I hate that I'm like telling you what to do she's like no I need to know like I want to get better at this stuff I need to know and so um and that's kind of gone on the court too like you know she'll come to practice and be like I don't want to be here I have no motivation and it's like okay like maybe we should work with the sword psych and like talk through that because you know once that you know now that this is your job and this is what you're doing like you got to find the motivation somewhere right um when because when we, it's not always you know fun to go and train when it's cold or when it's raining or when you're tired or you're 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 sore like all kinds of stuff um and it's cool to see the progress she's made and like the adjustments she's made we also switched sides at the very end of season which was like a total game changer and I think actually we were playing so well with me on the right and her on the left and then we switched one game randomly just to throw off the other team and it actually like benefited us so much so now I'm on the left which I I love being on the left hi sorry the male guys here um and uh so that's been a huge, huge thing for us too, is being able to switch sides when we need and uh, switching sides is, you know, putting me on the left and putting her on the right. Like she has this gnarly cross body, like cut shot from the right. Um, so it's a lot on and off the court. And it's been cool. We got it. We also um, have a great coach. We're working with Dan uh, Weiner, Weiner Rock. He's amazing. He's Brazilian. Um, so he's gotten us in really good shape too. He's kind of kicked our butt. <laughs> he's gotten us in good shape and um, he's the most supportive guy and so having someone on your team like my partner is so supportive and then my coach is so supportive like that trust is is important because I haven't always had that and so that's like really really positively impacted my my game and probably Abby's as well wow yeah Yeah, Dan anytime I look back at my practices with Dan because I would train with the best dude I would leave just ready for a nap oh yeah just going home and crashing oh yeah 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 he'll get you right um, that's cool. So thinking back, I, it feels like you've done a lot of growing this season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was, I'm guessing that was set up with a really good off season that you had. Um, so, so thinking back to this past off season, what did you do to kind of create and set up yourself to have the season that you did and be in the shape that you were to be able to perform well and things like that? Um, I haven't changed a ton on court except for, you know, I started working with Dan because funny enough, I actually rekindled my friendship and partnership with Tony Rodriguez um, beginning of this year. Cause we had a kind of a falling out and we're in a great place now, which I'm so happy about nice. you know, partnerships. Awesome. Like, and it puts a strain on your relationship sometimes if you don't have the correct communication styles or the correct, you know, like, you know, you're just, you're just different and that it really drove us apart. And, um, it's nice to be, have to have been able to reconnect with her, but I actually went and was playing with her in March in those like uh, challengers in Brazil. Um, and so I actually was training with her a bit, which is interesting. So like, and then me and Abby, we picked up Dan, I want to say in May, it was right before the Huntington ADP. We picked up Dan uh, end of April, early May. Um, and he's been awesome for the on court adjustments. Like, you know, he just, he's on his technical. Um, and so we had the freedom to like, he doesn't care where we pass, how we get the ball to this location. He just wants it there so we can run this offense. We started doing more, you know, spread passing so we can option more. Um, Mm -hmm. Haven't like fully developed the jump setting, but we work on it all the time um, and just expanding the offense there. But for me, the biggest 
shift I made in the in the preseason was um because when I'm in off season like December I don't do anything like I literally do nothing it's important for me to just like totally decompress enjoy the holidays put on a couple lbs like that's just how I am like I want to <laughs> do that but in the preseason it was a big shift in my mentality because I've been so hard on myself like we all are and so I actually read this book called The Confident Mind if you guys ever oh listen to Dan like people talk about it all the time and um that's been so transformative in, in my in my volleyball career. Just, you know, and they have all these little exercises that they have you do. But the biggest thing for me was just the positive self-talk. Like, yes. after you make a mistake, like, I, you know, when I'm when it's 19 all, I'm like, serve me the ball. And, and sometimes you don't actually feel that way because you're nervous and you're like, uh. But, like, it's almost like fake it till you make it. Like, I want the ball. Like, or you get blocked. Like, if I get blocked, I'm probably going to swing the same swing and try and beat the ball. <laughs> Like, and so I used to be, not be like that. I used to like go towards a different, you know, I used to get inside out ruts cause I'd get blocked and then I go to a shot cause I didn't want to get blocked again. And then the defenders are picking that up and you know, my ten on the right side, my tendency was so wrist away, wrist away, wrist away. And so I started just getting more caught, com- like going for my cut shot more on, on the right side and, and going for the swing more swinging for high hands. And if you miss the hands, then so what, like, you know, volleyball is a game of mistakes and everyone makes mistakes. And I, I just had to trust that I could, um, regain points in my defense. My defense has always been my, my strength. And so just uh, trying to like be more confident in my, in my side out. That's where I was lacking was, was my side out. And I passed, I passed like a boss. Like that's another day I was a libero and indoor. So I, I passed pretty well, but like, I was not confident at all in my, in my offense um, transition for some reason was fine. It was just the side out, the pressure of, of being able to side out. Um, and so, yeah, that book was really helpful. And, just, you know, reminding myself like errors are okay. And like, you got to go, don't be tentative with your shot, like go for the shot. Cause if you're tentative, you're probably going to make more errors. Um, and just having that, like, even if you say it out loud, like serve me, I played with M day two years ago and she would go serve me. And I was like, what is this girl doing? Like, this is so weird. And I love it. Like, that was like, Whoa. Like it's like a fake confidence that I think is so awesome. And, um, I kind of took that one, that one from her and, you know, from the book and just like when the game's tight, you want it to be in your hands. Like you want it to, you want it. To, and if you blow it, if you blow the game, that's all you're only learning and growing from, right. from that experience, which is sometimes a tough pill to swallow. You get stuffed on match point. That's happened to me a lot where they'll serve Abby the whole match and then switch to me. And I make an error on match point. Cause you're just, no, you're not in a rhythm. Your, your, your partner's not in a setting rhythm. You're not in a passing attacking rhythm. Um, and that's tough to swallow, but I've always found that being aggressive and it doesn't mean swinging all the time, but just being aggressive in, in your decisions, like, and what, what the set gives you and what you see and what you hear, like, go for it. Don't, don't be hesitant. Don't be tentative. So, um, I work with the sports psych at USA volleyball too. And, and he's been good for me just to talk through things and, um, and help on that, on that as well. So it's, yeah, definitely the mental side has been the big, the biggest shift for me, I think. Man. Yeah, and, and all by the way, all these guys know about the confident mind uh, yeah, because good. Travis recommended it to me because I had so many losses last season uh, that were like two point losses oh, so going to extra innings, and I was just so frustrated. I was so fed up. I was even fed up enough to put the my losses that were two points like in the round to get in and things like that as my screensaver. But then I like go back to the confident mind and I read it and they're like, stop reminding yourself of the things that are bad areas of your life that you don't like, you know, (laughs) so like remind yourself yourself of the top 10. Um, And and so for you, Savvy, uh, you had a lot of top 10 moments this season uh, Mm -hmm. that you can like draw back on uh, really for the rest of your career. And so maybe maybe list off a few of those top 10 that you like to remind yourself from the confident mind exercise that you like to remind yourself of when maybe you start losing that confidence. Like how do you reel it back in whenever with, with that top 10? You guys are just hyping me up so much. This is what I Oh do. yeah. We're casting you up. So, that's that's so what this nice. is about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously like, you know, I have the Denver win and in, in the um, Virginia beach win. those were big uh, beating Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes this year was big. Um, I, I've found that in my my professional career, I I like may not have had the best finishes overall, but I've beaten a lot of good people. Like I beat um, 
this year with Abby, we beat uh, Anouk and Joanna, the Swiss team that took um, wow. bronze in 2021. Um, I don't know why there's a thumbs up on my page. <laughs> it's, a, it's a random thing. About but, um, yeah, I'm like, it's good. But um, that was a big one this year. And then, you know, we go – sometimes losses are, are big. Like, get, playing against Taryn and Kristen, like, losing 1917, we played so well. Like, that could be up there, too. I, you know, obviously, a win would be great. Um, and then – I've beaten um, right after the Olympics in 2021. Me and Megan Kraft beat um, Sarah Sponsel and Kelly Chang in Atlanta in my first ADP that I qualified for. So that was like a huge. It was our first match. They were like the one seed, and we were the 16 or the two and the 15, and, and we went and upset them. And it was so hot, and like we just played the day before. And so that that is like a special. That was my first my first ever ADP. So that was like a really special moment for me. And um, that was in 2021. Um, and then in 2022, me and Emily Day beat um, Maria Faye and Taliqua, who were the 2021 silver medalists. We were in Portugal, and we had to face them in the, I want to say the quarterfinals, maybe. Um, in that same tournament, we ended up losing. It was, it was in two sets, but it was like, you know, 22, 20, 21, 19. And really great battle there so yeah like i've beaten a lot of really good teams and it's cool to see this year that like that's translated to more wins and better finishes because i usually if i've been facing these good teams really early on and then i upset them and then i play a team that's not as good and i lose and it's so frustrating um i also feel like i have a tendency to bring my best game when i play the top players um which is great but i need to have that uh as well for for everyone it's it's like keeping that that consistent I think it's kind of maybe like you have nothing to lose like when we played Kelly Chang and Syracuse in Manhattan we we're like we got nothing to lose that's the game we switched sides on um our coach Dan this is Matt you'll know Dan uh he's so funny but we were playing you know Kelly Chang and her husband Jordan is very analytical and um very computer based and and Dan roomed with him in Paris at the Olympics and Dan was like let's just mess him up he's gonna have this whole game plan for you <laughs> Let's just switch sides to the first play. And then we started siding out. So oh my, well. yeah. And we stayed the whole game and it worked super well. And so then we kind of just stuck with it. And uh, <laughs> that was, that was a, 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 that, that game was really special in Manhattan and wow. in front of our friends and family. That that's probably that, that may be number one. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. The yeah. Denver and Virginia beach ones were like big cause they were wins, but um, you know, people will say, Oh, it's not a real AVP win. Like whatever. I count it as a win. Like, 100%. You know, if I win Chicago or Manhattan, it'll be it'll feel better. But like, <laughs> you know, to be there's some just because the teams we were playing in those tournaments were not the top whatever teams. Like it doesn't like the women's side is so stacked. Even the men's is so stacked. Like so low in points, even and like it's so cutthroat. And so that that's a huge victory for us to go and like you know we have the the target on our back. We're the number one seed or the number two seed. Um, and that's just pressure in itself. We're trying to qualify for the events that we know we should, you know, Manhattan, Chicago, like we should, we deserve to be there. And, and so to go and win those is, is big. Although it wasn't the top, whatever teams, it's still really good competition and um, was really, really big for us. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Um, and and what, going back to your Dan and uh, Chang uh, comparison, I mean, those are just the two absolute extremes. Extremes. Of, of Ext- coaching. Because yeah. then you have like Dan over here is like, he's i call it the again mentality in coaching uh you mess it up do it again do it again <laughs> you know like just do it over and over and he's over. the best he's just instilled so much confidence in it yeah and like because he'll if i look at him and we're down he'll go he'll do this rip your like your spin surf he wants me to rip my serve and yeah. almost every time i get an ace when he does that and he's in the box like cheering so loud and it's it's cool to see like have a coach that's like pushing you to do things that may not be in your comfort. Like it's, it's in my comfort zone, but like giving you that confidence to do that and then supporting you the most when you, when you do it, even if I miss my serve, like he is like so stoked that I just went for it. I ripped it. Um, and that, seriously, like he's been, he's been so important to us and, and where, where we're at. We wouldn't have done things that we did this year without him. He's, he's so, so awesome. Cool. Yeah. 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 Um, that leads me to my next question. Whenever you feel like you were just in a rut. Maybe that's siding out and, yeah, and, yeah. and just struggling to do your part. What do you feel like is something that you need to hear from maybe Abby or like, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, at least in the Denver match, 
uh, in the Denver final, they served Abby more. Is it was that true? And then I'm trying, or to, was remember. It I'm trying to remember. I I definitely got served a lot. It's like interesting. Like I got served a lot. Uh, in the finals, I don't remember as much. I got served a lot in Denver and Virginia okay. Beach. I got served a lot. Uh, Abby got served more in Wapaka. Um, kind of depends. It's cool when people have to, you know, switch off because we're siding out well. I, I want to say I got served a little bit in the beginning, and I was, like, super revved, and so they switched to Abby some, and then I think they went back to me at the end, if I remember Gotcha. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, so with that, it's like uh, one thing that Travis hopped on here and said was he had to learn really fast not – the golden rule in partnerships like don't give people what you need give yep. them what they need, what they need. Yep. yeah and so for you what do you need what do you need and then for your partner abby like what did you learn that she needed uh or what did she communicate with you because i'm sure that's a conversation that goes on pretty often for oh, sure like, for what sure do you need from me what do i need from you things like that um we're very similar uh, in what we need. We're very similar people. We're both super emotional and like get really fired up, which leads to some like, you know, high highs, low lows, you know, on and off the court. And so um, we both need, like, I feel like I more so need someone to, if I'm struggling, usually to side out, like I need someone to just say, just effing rip it, just come in aggressive and like, stay aggressive. Like um, Abby needs more of like, we're, we're actually very similar like stay aggressive like it's that's the confidence from your partner like i don't care if you get blocked i'm gonna cover you i'm gonna set you i'm gonna give you a call um when we both it's funny because we're so similar when we're both struggling to side out a lot of times it's like we're not listening to the call um when you're when you're kind of panicked sometimes the call is hard to hear um and you kind of want to go with your instincts or like your partner gives you a line call and they run a four it's easy to like not want to trust that call the next time. Um, and so the biggest reminders we have for ourselves is, Hey, Hey, I'm giving you a good call. My call is on, like, listen to my call. And if my call is oh. off and not spot on and the defenders juking a lot, I'm like come in and rip the defenders, like moving around a ton. My call is not great. Go and swing for high hands. Um, and then, you know, like in adding on to that, like if they're running fours every time, or if the defender's sitting middle and your chop angles open, like communicating that with each other. Cause you know, when you're struggling, your vision tends to go. Um, so communicating what the other team's doing defensively. And then the next piece is also like, Hey, move the set, move the, um, move, move the set around, go behind. Like almost every time we run a back set, when we're in trouble, we side out. So it's like, go behind. Abby likes to go to the pin more. So she'll, she's going to, she, she may even say like, Hey, I'm going to go to the pin here. I like to go behind because that kind of messes up the defense and makes the defender shift and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's just, just a couple cues, like remembering to move, move the set around, you know, communicating about what the defense is doing. Um, and then reminding each other to, to come in aggressive and, and swing. If you have to, you know, when, when in doubt, just rip, like, even if you're rip. playing a blocker, like you can tool them, you can beat them with speed, um, that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's, there's a lot, it kind of is game dependent, uh, depends on who we're playing and stuff like that. A lot of times Abby just wants to know what the other side is doing. Um, and a lot of times what I want to hear from her is like, Hey, just rip it. Or, Hey, my call is super good. Like, listen to my call. There's no better feeling when you're struggling than when you're, when your partner gives you a good call and you listen and it goes down. You're like, Oh, thank God. You're like, thank <laughs> God. Ev, Ev wow. just, Hi, I was practice. Good. Uh, so yeah, that's what I would think. And then again, we're super similar. Like, and I think the men's game's a little different because some men are so gnarly and they're like, they like to yell at each other. The women's a little, little different and, and all women are different too. But um, I definitely don't need someone going like, come on, side out. Duh. Like, that's not what I need, nor does Abby, nor do a lot of the women. Some women do like some women are gnarly and they're like, you know, they just start fighting with each other and it, and it works for them. That's just not how, how me and Abby are really. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's big insight. I've never heard. I, I guess it, it's a simple thing. Yeah. It's so effective where you're like, Hey, my call is on, you know, like if you're really struggling right now, my call is on point. That was a big thing we learned at UCLA. We used to practice. So at UCLA, we wouldn't do, um, we wouldn't give a line angle call. We'd give a left, right call because if you came out of the middle or you went behind, it got kind of confusing. And so we would do, we learned like when, and when you're hitting like left and right, and that's hard skill to like, 
it seems so easy, but to listen to that versus the line angle is, is tricky. Um, and so that was something that we practiced a ton at UCLA and a big reason I think we won games and, it, you know, in the college level, you shoot a lot more. So you're like, you know, you're listening to the, to the call a lot more. Um, and that's kind of something that we've carried over to now is the importance of a call. Like, because I don't think Abby and I are the best vision players. Like we've definitely improved our vision, but we're not Chris and Nuss who can literally like look at the other side while she's hitting the ball. Like she's <laughs> and sometimes like if it's windy, that's the most important time to listen to the call because the, the set's unpredictable. And like you, a lot of times you run underneath it. And like a lot of times when people are struggling, they come into approach early and they're under the ball. And so that's the best time to, to listen to a call. And so that's, that's a huge one that, um, that we do. And that's something that, um, is a tough thing though. Cause when you're struggling or when you want to use your vision, it's hard to like try and see or, or feel while hearing it's like multitasking. It's, it's hard to do, but if you and your partner can perfect that and have that trust, because being a good caller is a tough skill. Like, because a lot of people look at the open space and then the defender runs the open space. You got to be watching the defender and then be able to like, give a good set, come into cover, give a call. It's like, we really practice it at UCLA and it's, it's a skill that I think people need to work on more. Cause you can just destroy people with a good call. Like it's, you know what I mean? So that, that's a huge, that's a huge thing that we do. Wow. So it's left, yeah. right. And nobody are your calls. Yeah. And I, me and Abby, like since college, we started doing line angle a bit more too, but like whenever I'm out of the middle or like in transition, when the play's funky, I like the left, right. Because every once in a while you have a transition ball and I hear line and I go the wrong way. She's like, Oh, I meant the other way. Like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, you just in those times, give me a left, right. Um, so we can, we do line angle left, right. Um, it's just easier sometimes, like I said, like when you go behind or you're out of the middle and it's kind of a funky play, the setter back setting, like stuff like that, um, to have the left, right. Cause then it, then it's very clear. You're not, yeah. you're not questioning like, which way is my line? Like I'm out of the middle. I came behind, like which way is my line now? Um, and you can do it different ways where you and your partner just decide like, Hey, every time you go behind, you know, that becomes your line angle. Or, you know, if you, if you are on this half of the court. I don't know why I keep thumbs up. <laughs> but like if you're on this half of the body. court, you, I mean, you always go, you always go, you know, line is always that way or whatever. So that, that can be, that's, you know, partner specific as well. But left, right makes it easy to like, you, you never really question which way. Left is always left and right is always right. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I am such a habitual line caller. Like, yeah. I'll set it and just be like, line, without even looking. Everyone, <laughs> like everyone does the same thing because everyone runs, runs, you know, one blocks to start. Right. Like, ones right. and fours are probably the most common play. And so it's, everyone calls line. No one's first initial call is angle. <laughs> yeah. Or just and you always hear line, line, angle, angle. Like, <laughs> always, typical. But if you can, me and Abby started doing something too where you go, after you set, you go, and, this is a UCLA thing too, you say, mm. and. And so you, it holds your call a little bit longer so that you're not saying something. Cause that messes me up when I hear some, the initial call, usually I go with, and then I hear a switch. And sometimes if you can just hear the switch late enough to where you just flub it like middle, it usually works, but it's yeah. hard to, that if you're hearing that line call early. Then you hear angles, so you're already committed to, to something, um, especially when you're struggling, when you're right. coming in slow right. and you're tentative, like it's hard to like to adjust there. Yeah. So percentage wise um when you're setting out what are you like percentage wise what are you relying on call and um vision like for percentage wise how you how would good you question. split that that's that's a really good question i also think that that's kind of game dependent like when i'm like in my flow and i'm like feeling good and like feeling confident and being signing out well in the match a lot of it's like in a weird way it's like feel like I take a look, my vision's gotten a lot better. I take a look kind of like as I'm approaching. Um, but if people run fours and threes on me, then, then I can't see that. Um, you know, I don't know if anyone really can, but a lot of it, like, is you just cut, like when you're feeling good, you, you guys all know, like when you're feeling good and you come and rip, like you feel like you have the whole court open. Um, and so when I'm like confident and, and feeling good, like I think the percentage, like, you know, I listen to the call a good bit, but it's mostly just feel, especially if I'm swinging more, um, peripherally looking at the defender and, and noticing where the blocker is lining up and just taking the swing, like going and getting it. Like, because usually when you're feeling good, like your timing on your approach is good. Your hand on ball is good. When you're kind of struggling or you're not as confident, you're getting picked on and you're not, you're not signing out as well. Like I listen to the call a lot more. Um, I'm either coming in to swing or I'm listening to the call. Um, 
because you just don't have that confidence to like your your uh your feel like you're just not feeling I don't know like it's kind of this is kind of giving Chase Frischman e but like you know it's like your feel like we all kind of have a sense of the court and what's going on and sometimes your partner gives a line call and you just feel like cut, your cut's open and it is so um when you're when you're feeling good like go with your gut go with what you see go with what you feel um and listen to the call if you need but you know when I the, the percentages change when things are going well or, or when they're not you know what I mean and when I'm really struggling like really shooting the bed I just start swinging because that's like my you know like if I get blocked I get blocked like I I hate getting dug on shots like and then you're just scrambling to get back in transition like that's my least favorite thing I hate it like I'd rather get blocked I'd rather hit it out I don't know why I just like you know when you when you hit a line shot and the defender walks into it it's so de- defeating you're like oh gosh so um when it when I'm really struggling I just start ripping and, and maybe I should do it more because usually it works just come in and rip I love that yeah. I love that team ball hit ball I love it I, we should all do it more we, we all <laughs> we probably help all of us you know what I mean so. just hit the ball hit the yeah, ball no, yeah. um that's cool and and like you said I feel like that is something that changes based on defenders too Mm-hmm. Um, just as if, if you're the d- opposing defender is very mobile and moving a lot back there and making a lot of jukes, then it's like, just, just try to read where the block is and just, swing yeah. High, yeah. High. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, okay. Next question. So thinking about moving forward, cause I think we only have about 10 more minutes of your time, okay. um, moving forward. Obviously, you mentioned the international events coming up and whatnot. Um, what are some big goals that you are striving for? Um, and also kind of coupled with that, what are some of your phrases that you use from the confident mind that mm-hmm. you're going to use to go after those goals? Um, yeah, I mean, a big goal of mine right now, in all transparency, is just getting my mind right and, and getting mm-hmm. getting to a place where I like want to be going to practice want to be going competing like because these challengers in, in november are in asia china india philippines and that's like tough travel for anyone and, and wow. i don't really like traveling i don't like flying and so right now my number one priority is 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 getting my mind right and, and getting to a place where i'm like feeling refreshed not waking up tired every day which is just kind of the life of an athlete too but like getting to a point where i'm feeling confident in, in myself off the court because right, right now i'm not i'm not in that phase right now and it'll come with time but just you know working on uh, getting back to being myself I don't really feel like myself right now and it, it'll just take time but that's number one priority and then in terms of volleyball um, I'm excited to, to get back to train with Abby and, and get more lefts uh, more reps on the left side because that's something we haven't been doing a ton of but I think is going to be really cool and um, or being able to switch sides like you know getting reps of both at practice so when we play certain teams like maybe we play Hawaiian style maybe we you know, come out this way and that way and be equally comfortable doing both. So I think that's a huge advantage that we can have over people. Um, I want to continue to improve my, my defense, my transition. Um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things to, to work on, but I think the biggest thing is just uh, getting my mind right. And then, and getting excited to get out there and, and go train. And, you know, the cues for me right now, and this is kind of on the court and off is like, you're, you're good. Like, you know, just the positive self-talk, like this is going to pass. Like, so whether you're in a life rut or a side out rut, you're like, Oh, I'm going to get out of this eventually. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, just reminding myself that it'll, it'll pass and uh, to keep going and, and stuff like that. The confident mind, uh, the big one for me that you, you brought it up earlier that I forgot to mention was when you're watching film, instead of harping on like the mistakes you made, like go back and rewatch film of all the good stuff you did. And like, um, go into trainings and go into games with that confidence of like, okay, I played so well this match. I did these things right. Versus harping at all the bad, like go over the good stuff too. And and what you, what you crush and and what you want to bring into uh, your next competition. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. And another piece, just in addition to that, about the confident mind, another piece that was my favorite is uh, excitement and nerves give the same response or like are the same feeling in our totally. Body. totally. and so totally. it's it's such a cool thing that we can define what that feeling is mm. and then that causes our body to react in a way of 
looseness and uh, relaxed compared to if it's nerves, it's really tight and tense yep. Yep. and scared. Yep. Uh, and I think that's such a cool thing. Uh, and I'm sure you felt that a lot this past season with MVP Denver in the finals. I mean, that's a lot of people watching. Yeah, you know, it's I, the crowd. Me, when people are watching, I I love it. I've I've learned to love it so much this year. But prior to this year, I wasn't confident or yeah. confident enough in my skills to like be enjoying that moment. Yeah. Um, but it just it's such an enjoying thing or enjoyable thing whenever you. Yeah decide to call it excitement rather than nerves and so I, it's just, it's just total mindset shift and that's something that again dan like i again i'm so vulnerable so i'll be like when i'm before a game i'm super I'm, i'll be like i'm so nervous right now like i literally verbally express that because it helps me and dan's like you're just excited i'm like dan you're so cute i'm really <laughs> actually, i'm actually really nervous but i appreciate the the shift in in mindset because it, it really is a that. It really is a shift, and um, we all know when we play. Like usually, after the first couple of points, you kind of settle in, and, and it kind of is what it is. And you may get you may get tight again at the end of the game if it's close, but um, you know you, you settle eventually. And I like I do love that shift, the excitement versus the. And it's okay to be nervous. What I've learned is sometimes my right. best games are the games where, like, prior to the match, I'm almost throwing up, which is not healthy by any means. But just reminding myself that like I can be this nervous. Bye bye. Someone just said bye. I can be this nervous, but still compete at a super high level. Sometimes my best, like I get more scared when I'm not nervous. Cause I'm like, Whoa, mm. I am like, that's concerning for me. I'm not like on, um, so nerve nerves are good. And if you frame it as excitement too, especially like that's, it's all positive. It's all good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Let's, let's close with, uh, maybe a funny moment. If one pops <laughs> in your head from this past season that you're like, that is just so funny. Um, and I know there's, there's not many people in the meeting right now. I think they all yeah. had to bounce off, yeah. but just because it saves as a recording and then we may or may not post this as a podcast. I don't know yet. Um, yeah. Do whatever. So I like that. Whatever we, we mean. Yeah. Love to do that. Um, a funny but, moment. Oh, yeah. Man. From this past season. Uh, okay. It's not really, it's not really volleyball related. I might think of a volleyball one, but this is, it goes back to the engagement. Um, I'm in the gym. Um, and I got to be cautious because Logan's a babber, but Logan, you know, we're talking about engagement stuff and, and him and, and Abby and I'm with Timmy and some talk to me about him and Kyle. And I'm like messing around about like, Oh, Evan hasn't proposed yet. And I'm like, not the type of girl that's like, Oh, I need to be engaged by this day and have this plan. I was just like, whenever you want, I'm good. And I was messing with Logan about it and talking to him about like, oh, I wonder when Evan's going to do it. And, and he literally did it. And they knew he was going to do it. He did it like a couple days later. Like he did it like three days later. And um, seeing them after the engagement party and them being like, do you understand how hard it was to wow. hold that from you all? Same with Abby. Like, <laughs> and Evan are driving to Terranea up in Palos Verdes where he proposed. We're going to brunch. That's what I thought. I'm texting Abby and I'm like, Abby, Evan's acting really weird. Is Evan going to propose? And Abby was like, no. He would have told us, da 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 da. Meanwhile, she's driving to Terranea to oh come my, take yeah. pictures and stuff. And so it's just funny, like everyone trying to keep a secret. It's hard to keep a secret for me because I'm so, like, I want to be, I want to know what's going on in everyone's head. And I want to know, like, I, it's hard to keep a secret for me, I think. Um, and they all did such a good job. So that was definitely, like, the funniest moment when I saw them at the engagement party being like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I was literally talking to you guys about this three days ago. How did you keep this all under wraps? That was. Yeah. That was a good one. And then volleyball. I I suck I at know. secrets. I cannot oh, do secrets I'm whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, terrible. Oh, but, I can't imagine how difficult yeah. it was. I I'll probably think of a volleyball one later. I can't think of it right now. Maybe yeah. a fun maybe a funny practice. Um we did a really fun practice with uh we had a three team practice, me and Abby, Kelly Chang, Sarah Hughes, and Kim Hildreth, Tegan Van Guns the day before Hermosa. And there's three of us on a team and two of the girls had to hold arms and like touch oh, the ball. And it was a super fun and funny drill that like, you know, they had to hold, hold hands for the whole rally. And then um, they could each touch it, but they only had their one hand to touch it. And some of us were like trying to, you know, have one platform and then the other platform coming together. And so that was, that was a super fun warm up at practice uh, that I, I love. Oh, that would be so funny to watch from the strand. Just oh, like, so what, people are probably like, like what is going on out there? 
I was saying Gary, the guy from Italy, was in town for the Hermosa Open, and he was staying at this guy's house on the Strand, and he was watching us. He was like, what was that warm-up? He was like, what? And we were just on the ground laughing so hard. It was so fun. That was definitely <laughs> a fun moment. Definitely a fun moment. It's TIA. This is America. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. He, he was yeah. like, what is going on? I'm like, <laughs> it's like what well, happens in America? Bro, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, so fun. Oh, man. Well, thank well, you guys so much for this. This has been yeah. so fun. Jen Marine, yeah. thanks for coming out. This has been awesome. Yeah, of course. Been... Thank you so much for joining. Of course, it's <laughs> awesome. And if you feel like you want to use the podcast, like I'm, um, you guys can do whatever you want with this. Like totally open to whatever. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Savvy. Thank where you can so much. Yeah. Um, where can yeah. people find you, Savvy? Share with um, them. On my on my Instagram, I guess. I can't I can't promise a quick response. I'm trying to be like. <laughs> less on the social media front but i'm open to communicate with whoever come find me at tournaments like i'm open to chat at term i'm not like the type of player that like needs like you know space at tournaments like come come find me at tournaments come take a picture come talk to me um dm me on instagram um get my contact from marine or, or matt i don't care like i'm not like trying to hide from people i want to the biggest thing with my anxiety is i want to help people um I, i'm still trying to figure out how to help myself but like i want to be vulnerable and talk about it to, so that you know this becomes more of an open thing to discuss because it's becoming more common, just, you know, anxiety and depression and stuff to commonly talked about and just happening more frequently. I think probably big in part to the phones and social media. Don't get me started. There's a whole thing, but I want to, I want to help people and that, cause helping people helps me as well. So um, I'm, I'm open to talk about that. I'm open to talk about volleyball, like more about my personal thing, more about, you know, anything like that. And maybe I'll do some bad coaching stuff. Um, Evan and I have been trying to figure out our, schedule for the rest of the year so we haven't committed to any any coaching stuff because we've been we're traveling so much just to play and also trying to take some time off too so maybe we'll, we'll end up at a bad camp or something but yeah thank you guys so much you can access me anywhere get my contact from whoever i'm i'm open to chat love it any sponsors or anything you want to throw out too yeah i am sponsored by center point securities well they're, no. they're, they're, no, they, no. They, go by, they go by clear street now um the, the head of the division um they're a financial services company and they, they've helped me, Megan Craft, Paul Lottman, Miles Partain, Andy Benish, a ton. Um, Oakley sponsors me too. I'm not wearing my glasses right now. Um, I think this is my PT, Davis and DeRosa. They're based in uh, Hermosa Beach. They're awesome. Um, and then, yeah, Root and Fruit Nutrition. Uh, her name's Sarah. She's uh, a genomist and nutritionist and she's been helping out a ton with my anxiety and stuff. We did a uh, gene test and then a neurotransmitter and hormone test. And so it's really cool to see like where my levels were. This was back in December. Um, it was really cool to see like where my levels are and stuff and, and see like, uh, what can be improved and what foods I can do supplements, stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So sick. Awesome. Savvy. Thank you so much for your time. And just thank you for being such an inc- incredible human being and friend. Uh, to everyone and just a great example for anybody to follow so oh, i love you guys love we love you have, thank, thank you so for much time. for having me anytime this is awesome yeah all right have a great day bye